assalamu alaikum welcome to technical explain in this video we are going to study the fourier series so the fourier series is used for periodic signals it is a way of representing a signal in terms of infinite sine and cosine terms for example this square wave now according to fourier this square wave is composed of infinite number of sine terms so if we sum up all those sine terms we are going to get this square wave now fourier series is used for periodic signals but we know that real time signals are non periodic signals and for the analysis of non periodic signals we used fourier transform and because we have continuous time signals as well as discrete time signals that is why we have continuous time fourier transform which is used for the analysis of continuous time signals similarly we have discrete time fourier transform which is used for the analysis of discrete time signals the fourier transform is used for a periodic signal fourier series is used for periodic signals now what is the general representation of periodic signal this is the general representation of periodic signal and it means that if we time shift a signal equal to the time period we get no change in periodic signal in other words if we time advance or time delay a signal equal to the a uh, time period we will get no change in a periodic signal the reason is that periodic signal repeats after every time period so if we left shift or right shift by a period equal to the time period we will get no ch change in a periodic signal so the fourier series is generally represented in this way where we have a dc uh, value and then we have sine and cosine terms the dc or the average value can be many a times find by visual inspection for example if we have a signal like this where we have time on x axis and we have amplitude on y axis for example the amplitude of the signal is 1 and it varies from 0 to 1 time period now how can we find the dc value of this we can we know that area under curve in this case is 1 so in this case area under curve is equal to 1 So here area under curve is equal to one. Now to find the DC value, we are going to find we are going to write area divided by total time. Now the total time is from here to here. For example, it's a periodic signal and it is repeating after every intervals of time. Now the total time, the area is one because one cross one is one, and the total time is two seconds. So that's why area under curve in this case is one by two. but if we have a signal like this for example we have a positive wave as well as a negative wave for example this is my 1 and this is for example my minus 1 and this is from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 this is my time axis now because this wave is symmetric symmetrical about the time axis so in this case area under curve is equal to 0 that is why in this case dc value is going to be equal to 0 the so time average of a function basically gives the dc value which in this case is zero next is the concept of harmonics harmonics are actually integer multiples of fundamental frequency for example if i have a general representation of sine wave and i have a sine omega t plus b sine of 2 omega t plus c sine of 3 omega t now this omega which is the angular frequency is going to be my fundamental frequency so this is my fundamental frequency and we know that omega is equal to 2 pi f or omega is equal to 2 pi divided by t now if you have a look this is now 2 omega so this is actually my second harmonic so this is my second harmonic and this is also even harmonic because it is second har harmonic and then we have 3 omega so this 3 omega is my odd harmonic or it is my third harmonic so harmonics are the multiples of the fundamental frequency and a b c are called the coefficients and and these coefficients define the weights of the harmonics for example if i have a signal which is for example x of t is equal to 2 sin omega t plus 7 sin of 2 omega t plus 11 sin of 3 omega t it means that the third harmonic is more dominant in this signal as compared to the 
fundamental frequency are as compared to the second harmonic because weight of the third harmonic is 11 which is greater than the weight of the second harmonic which is 7. Then we have types of Fourier series expansion. Now basically there are two types of Fourier series expansion. What One is trigonometric Fourier series expansion and the other is exponential Fourier series expansion. Next is the Dirichlet conditions. We cannot apply a Fourier series to every periodic signal. The signal must satisfy Dirichlet conditions before we can apply the Fourier series. Now the, the Dirichlet conditions are three in number. First is finite number of maxima and minima in one time period. So there should be finite number of maxima and minima in one time period. For example, we have the signal x of t and this is my time period. For example, if you take this from here to here, then this is my time period. If you can see, we have only one maxima and one minima. So we have finite number of maxima and minima. So we can apply Fourier series to this signal. But if we see this signal, if you can have a look, we have infinite number of maxima and minima. We have one maxima, second, third, fourth, and then we have a very large number of maxima we cannot count it. Similarly, we have an infinite number of minima. So we cannot apply Fourier series to this signal. This is a periodic signal. It is repeating after every interval of time. This is my one time period. This is my second time period. It is repeating after every interval of time, but we cannot apply Fourier series to this signal because we have infinite number of maxima and minima in one time period. The second Dirichlet condition is finite number of discontinuities in one time period. Now if you see this signal, this is again my time period is from here to here or here to here. We have a discontinuity here and we have a discontinuity here. So we have only two discontinuities which means we have finite number of discontinuities in one time period. So we can apply the Fourier series to this signal but if we have a periodic signal for example this is the signal of my one time period and this signal repeats after every interval of time and this is my periodic signal but still we cannot apply Fourier series to this signal. The reason is that amplitude of this signal reduces to half uh, after every step. So if we see this signal we have a discontinuity over here and then we have a discontinuity over here and then we have a discontinuity over here and then here and this discontinuity will uh, continue till we reach the zero point. So there are infinite number of discontinuities because they are, they are going to be infinite times for this number one to reach zero. So that is why we cannot apply Fourier series to this signal. The third and final Dirichlet condition is that the function R signal should be absolutely integrable over time period. Now by absolute integrable means that if you have a function x of t, we need to take the absolute value and we need to integrate it over the time period. If we get a finite value, then the function is absolutely integrable which means that we can apply Fourier series to that signal but if the overall function is not absolutely integrable that is we do not get the finite value for this function by integrating it over the time period we do not get a finite value but we get an infinite value then we cannot apply Fourier series to it. The example of non absolutely integrable signal over time period is this tangent signal or tangent function. If we can have a look this tangent function approaches to infinite and some values that is why it's uh, if you take the integration over the time period that will not be a finite value. So we cannot apply Fourier series to this signal despite being a periodic signal. Just as I said earlier that we have two representation of Fourier series that is the trigonometric Fourier representation and then as well as the exponential Fourier series representation. So and this is the general representation of the Fourier series. So now to study the trigonometric Fourier series expansion, this is a mathematical representation of trigonometric Fourier series expansion where this A0 is actually the DC or the average value. And to find the A0, what we need to do is that we need to integrate the signal over time period and then divided by the time period. So this is the uh, mathematical expression for A0. We need to integrate the signal over the time period that is we need to find the area under the curve over the time period and divided by the total time period to find the uh, DC or the average value of the function. 
Next is our infinite number of cosine terms. And then again, we have the coefficient which is a n. To find the a n, we need to integrate the signal x of t multiplied by cos n omega naught t over the time period and then divided by t naught divided by 2. So if we divide 1 by t naught divided by 2, we get 2 by t naught. So this is our expression for this coefficient a n. And similarly, we have infinite number of sine terms which are running from 1 to infinite and we have the coefficient of b n. And this b n is given as 2 by t naught integration over time period x of t into sine n omega naught uh, omega naught dt. So this is this expression is used to find the coefficients of b n and this expression is used to find the coefficient of a n and this expression is used to find the dc or the average value. For example, if I have the trigonometric Fourier series expansion like this, that is x of t is equal to 3 plus 2 sine omega naught t plus 3 cosine omega naught t plus 7 sine 2 omega naught t plus 5 cosine 3 omega naught t. Now this 3 is in this reverse and this continues till the infinite terms. Now this 3 is my dc or the average value. So this is my dc or the average value and this is my fundamental frequency. So this is my you can say if we have a look over here this is my b1. So this b1 here is equal to 2. I am going to write over here a0 is equal to 3. This b1 is equal to 2. Similarly a1 is equal to 3. Similarly, this is going to be my B2. So B2 is equal to 7 and similarly this A2 is equal to this is also cosine 2 of omega naught 2 and this A2 is equal to 5. So these are the coefficients of this trigonometric Fourier series expansion. This is my fundamental frequency and this is my second harmonic. So this 2 omega naught t is my second harmonic. I have a sine uh, second harmonic as well as a cosine second harmonic. Now there are some important points about the symmetries of a signal. For example, we know that A0 is the DC or the average value of the signal. If the signal is symmetrical about time axis, then the DC value is going to be 0 because in that case total area is going to be 0, zero when the signal is symmetrical about the time axis. So if the signal is symmetrical about the time axis, we know that we have three types of coefficients in Fourier series A0 and then we have a n and b n. So in case the signal is symmetrical about the time axis then a naught is going to be equal to 0. The second important point about the symmetrical symmetry is that if the signal is even signal that is if we have x of t is equal to x of minus t that is if the signal is symmetrical about the i y axis then in that case there will be no b n term. So in that case b n is going to be 0. Because why the bn is going to be 0 because bn is the coefficient of uh, sine terms and we know that sine is an odd function. So if we have an even signal then for that case all the coefficients of the sine terms is going to be 0 that is why bn is going to be 0. Similarly if we have an odd signal that is if we have a signal which is an odd signal in that case we are going to have x of t is equal to minus x of t and the odd signal is symmetrical about the origin. So in that case there will be no a n terms that is in that case there will be no cosine terms so in that case a n is going to be equal to 0. Now we can understand this by an example I have the function x of t now if you can have a look this x of t is symmetrical about the time axis so area under curve of this point to this point that is going to be equal to some 0. So that is why it is symmetrical about the time axis that is why the first component a0 is going to be equal to 0. This signal is also symmetrical about the y axis. If you can have a look this is symmetrical about the this y axis. So that is why here again the a and the b n terms is going to be equal to 0. Why the b n terms is going to be equal to 0? Because the odd terms sine is an odd function and odd terms is going to be equal to 0. So in this case bn is going to be equal to 0. So if you are asked to find the Fourier series expansion of this type of signal you need only to find the an because we have 
found by visual inspection that a naught and bn is equal to zero now this is my second signal again if we can have a look this signal is also symmetrical about the time axis so this signal again is going to have a naught is equal to zero now this signal is also symmetrical about the origin if you can see about the origin this signal is symmetrical which means that a and term is going to be equal to zero why are a and terms is going to be equal to zero because there will be no cosine terms in this case as it is an odd function so we are going to find only the b and terms in this case so by visual inspection we can say that the dc term is zero as well as the a and terms is going to be equal to zero for this signal